Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Okay, look like we're here. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest. And if you notice, I'm, I'm still wearing my cover here, Vietnam vet, and I'm reaching out to vet also, too. And, and I normally start off the show now by basically saying to you, if you've got family members who are former military and whatever, please get them to go to the VA. Just call up the VA, Google up VA, and if not that, let them know that uh, uh, to check in. And then they will determine whether or not, in fact, the person was eligible for, for services, or if not that, they could get their card. And I think that's a very important piece, very important at this point in time, because the entire community of, of, of these United States are saying thanks for serving. They want to recognize vets. And trust me, uh, they've got their community now. I mean, people are really trying to do everything they can for vets. Vietnam War, Korean War, those are some of the older guys at this point in time. But the Iraqi war, some young folks and this, that, and the other. I mean, it's all set up. The system is there, whether it's homeless issues or anything along that line, uh, senior citizen housing programs, all that kind of stuff is already there. So with that, uh, I will continue to do that. In fact, I'm going to have a special show just on vets in the very near future uh, where we're just going to be talking about issues. We're going to talk about stories. I'm going to be having vets on, and we're going to be interviewing the VA and some of the, some of the specific uh, programs that are available at the VA to get your attention about the fam- about the opportunities that are sitting up there at the VA. It's an excellent program, but you got to go and you got to file and you have to register. Okay, with that, we're going to get into our show today. I think we're going to have a very exciting show today, one that uh, that needs, if you will, translating. I'll put the word translation on that one aspect. Uh, a lot of times you, you'll find, uh, like, again, we're talking about the Portland Public Schools. Portland Public Schools right here in Portland, Oregon, if you will, it's the largest school district in the state of Oregon. And in all due respect, it's going through transition. Uh, and we've been a part of that transition. We've, we've, we've had access to the school board, to the, to the person that I'm interviewing today, a gentleman by the name of Steve Buell. He's here with us today. He had all the credentials. He was on the school board years back. He's, besides that, he's a teacher. He was a teacher. And uh, he basically got off and he went out and still teach. And he went out to Washington and taught there for a bit. And then all of a sudden he decided to come back home. And uh, here at the Portland Public Schools, he ran for office and he won. And uh, and then all of a sudden they, he wasn't in. This is the second time. Now the, the third time he said, well, I don't know. And uh, he decided to... Uh, uh, necessarily not run for office again, but not, but one thing about uh, Mr. Buell is that he's a committed person when it comes to kids, especially poor kids. Just making sure that the kids gets a fair shot at what our society is all about. And it's getting to become more sophisticated every day. So it's so important to have, if you will, the kind of organization and the kind of structure and within our education system that focuses on kids and everything else is secondary. Is all support kind of mechanism. So, Steve, we want to welcome you. Thank you. Go to Digest today, and uh, first of all, we want to thank you for again uh, spending that time that that four years. You you were retired. I mean, but by the you you went back to the table and and tried to do everything you could to to uh, you get the focus back up. Some of the folks were a little lacking in whatever from what I've seen, but you were always on the show and we were sharing thoughts and this that and that. So what we want you to do this time around is that we want you to. Uh, kind of give us a feel, give us an update on your time that you were on it uh, uh, at this last four years, if you will. I think it was four years, eight years. Four. Four years, your four years aspect of it. Bring that up to date, and then now you're not there, and, and hopefully you can talk about just what, what were some of the benefits and some of the assets that we, we, we you retained that you feel we've got the right direction, and where should, and where are we going at this point in time? And just, a, just, a, just give us an overview. The, the where we're going is. Yes, okay. Let's. I'll just That's start really there. Good. Appreciate it. Uh, there's several issues that are remaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, two major ones. One is the search for the superintendent, okay. new superintendent, and that seems to be moving along fairly mm-hmm. fast. Uh, there's always the question about whether you do it in public or in private. Mm-hmm. And if you do it in public and it works out, then everybody said that was a good idea. You do it in private and it works out, then that was a good idea. And so we're kind of doing this one in private. In private. And we did it in private when it didn't work out. This last time when I was still on the school board and we did the superintendent search and came up with a pretty good guy. I thought he was a really great guy, mm-hmm. but he 
had some problems and didn't get across the hump. And now they're being a little more careful uh, as they go along. But it's pretty much in private at this point. You don't know who the people are. Uh, so you, you're not sure how good it is. Could be really a great person, could not be. It's hard to tell. Uh, it's not like on the school board now, there's not a lot of people who are really understand how the educational system works right, really right. well. They're on there and they have different backgrounds, have brought different backgrounds. How many teachers are on the board now? Actually, actually, uh, Julius Barza Brown was a teacher, uh, younger grades. Okay. And so, she, and she kind of limited out in the younger grades in the ESL. It made it, it she seems to struggle sometimes when you get to the older grades and, and so forth. But she she's a teacher. Oh, and, do, you, do, do you remember? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, that's, it. Uh, that's it. That's uh, it. That's one, it. One person who was a teacher. You have uh, people who have been very, very involved in the community, and someone like uh, Rita Moore has been involved in the educational community for a long time. Mm -hmm. But she's and, not a teacher. No, but she's paid attention she's paid to, attention. Okay. to the, how the community... How, one of the things that makes it difficult for some people on the board is they've paid attention real carefully to the how the community interacts with the schools, okay. which is a very, very important thing. But every day you got 30 kids going to a classroom and they teach and how the, and they don't have any interaction with the community at all to some degree. So you've got that aspect of the whole educational program that doesn't, it doesn't have very good oversight for a long time. And hopefully what you want in your superintendent is a person who can see that see the oversight and what should be taking place in the schools and what is not taking place that should be there. That's the key. If you depend on the school board to do it, you don't have people on the school board now who can do that. Uh, and if you come in with a superintendent that wants to make sure everything goes smoothly, you're not going to get to the problems because some of the problems aren't going to go smoothly if you really deal with them. Uh, the disparities in the programs, for instance, they're not going to go smoothly because you're going to have to go out to this school and, in a way, take something from this school and give it to this school. That's never going to go smoothly. Mm -hmm. Who wants to do that? Mm -hmm. And so, but the fact that they'll maybe get to the point where that su the new superintendent does understand where we're lacking and where we're doing well mm -hmm. and can focus in on where we're lacking and make sure and support where we're doing well. I mean, that's a tricky, that's a tricky thing. School, yeah, tricky. school board isn't able really to do that. And one of the things that has created problems for us in Portland over the years is that we don't have necessarily the people in the educational side mm -hmm. who can do that either. There's way too much worrying about how it affects me mm -hmm. as an employee as opposed to how it affects the children out here. And so if the State Department says, oh, you should be doing this, and it's not the right thing, and often it's not from the State Department, sorry, no offense, I've spent a long time following those guys, mm -hmm. and if they say, you should be doing this, and we don't look and say, well, really, not, not really, that's not going to really work for us, that puts me in a pretty hard spot if I'm an employee, because I'm going against the State Department, and I'm going against kind of that common idea of maybe what should be do be done. So it, it makes it tough. And we haven't really had a lot of educators who are willing to stand up on that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when they're willing to stand up, they're really good, mm -hmm. and they went someplace yeah. else. We just lost a great uh, woman who was a vice principal in Portland, and she they picked her up out at uh, North Clackamas. Wow. Clackamas yeah. School District picks her up, yeah. takes her right out of the mid... She was an African-American yeah. woman who was really smart and great. Mm -hmm. And they picked her up and grabbed her and gave her a promotion. And, you know, most people will go with the promotion. Yeah, 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 and yeah, you yeah. go in and say, hey, we love you, man. Yeah, yeah. And here's the promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to yeah. give you more. Yeah. And we're going to give you more yeah, responsibility. Yeah, yeah, and they go, all oh, right. Yeah. And, and a bigger pay, yeah. of course. And so... Uh, we just haven't had people who are willing to stand up enough and say, this is what needs to be done. But what about the Blanchard and, and Matt Prophet's uh, era? 
I mean, those guys have been there for quite some time. They knew the, they knew the territory. They knew the politics. You know what I'm saying? Well, yes. And, and, and at that time, we did have a lot of people yeah, willing. Yeah. But it, it, the difference, and this is a negative difference now. Mm -hmm. a lot of, one of the negatives difference, and I've been on your show before, yes, or even yes. I was on the school board, go back several yeah, well, years, yes. and talking about the testing yes. and uh, the common core yes. and the yes. systems yes. and the data and that stuff to a certain degree has become, gets in the way of real education. Mm -hmm. I had my first uh, wife was a marvelous school teacher. Oh man, every kid in the first grade at Peninsula School, Peninsula school. could read grade level every year, every time, wow. uh, always. I have another friend who was a fifth grade teacher out in Reynolds and at, the, at that point I think his school was the lowest economic school in the state of Oregon. Every kid in his fifth grade Every kid, for years, could read wow. well, decently well to go. And we're, it was because they were excellent teachers. It wasn't because they were using this little system that comes from somebody and that they're testing everybody and doing all the data. It was because they were excellent teachers. And we've kind of forgotten that. And so it goes into the second big issue here, which is the negotiations that we're doing. We're, there's a chance we're looking at a teacher strike in Portland, which would yeah. be a disaster. It would be a disaster. Absolutely horrible. And the, it's all, the whole issue really seems to be around workload. How much do I have? Can I, well, people think, okay, are you working too much? Well, the average teacher works 50 hour weeks. That's every practically every study they've ever done shows 50 hour week for the average teacher. So 10 hour days, every day for all 180 days. And, but the workload itself is that teachers are worried about is not how much work in terms of how many hours or it's can I really do the job or have I been piled, had so much stuff piled upon me with these expectations that doesn't allow me to do the job? That's the workload question. It's not uh, teachers who are, oh, I'm overworked. No, it's can I do the job for my kids? Mm -hmm. And right now, the answer is, hey, you gotta do all this data stuff, you gotta do the testing stuff, you gotta do the common core, how are you doing, you gotta do, well, what about the children? What about the relationship and the education, direct, the direct education of those children? That's. Be, that's the problem. And the question is, so you need to maybe limit it. For instance, if you're an English teacher in high school, let's say you have your kids write every two weeks mm -hmm. and you have 180 kids. That means you have 180 papers, 180 to, at about 10 minutes a paper for, that gives you about 30 hours worth of work every two weeks extra. On top of the fifty. On top of the fifty. And so that's good. That gets you up. That gets you up to about sixty-five every week, wow. and so what happens is, teachers will begin to one of two things: either they just go crazy, and they're yeah. doing sixty-five yeah. hour weeks regularly, or very hard. But you can do, and they'll do it. They'll you know, do good, it. good young teacher will do it. It's tougher than the older teachers who are fifty-eight years old and very goes, experienced. Though, like, and, yeah, and and but. Eventually what happens, they'll begin to write, have the kids write less. So the workload is directly connected to the education of the children, mm -hmm. which is the thing that we're having trouble seeing that in the, in the school district itself, the people who are doing the negotiations, not familiar with that. Really the workload is, it's the key to how much children can learn because if your teacher's overworked, you can't get to this kid. You can't get to that kid, maybe. You got a kid who's really difficult, yeah, but with all this other thing, these other things going on and sucking in your time, mm -hmm. then something's got to suffer. Well, what suffers is the education. Well, they, well Steve, having said that, what do, what, 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 what do you feel the, the school district? Of the board, did the board understand what you were saying over the last four years, and how far? What percentage of that did they understand? What do you think? You know, you can understand your house needs to be painted, but you don't necessarily paint it. Right. 
That's the same. That's the same. That's the same with the. That's the same with the school board. They can kind of understand that, but you have to follow through and do it. And in this case, you need the negotiations. What they need to do is the school district needs to come forward with a plan that deals with the workload to some degree and says, okay, we're not going to take these high school English teachers and give them 65-hour work weeks. Right, right. We're going to give them less kids. We're not going to, but, but a PE teacher might be able to take more kids in their right, class. Right, right. It's nuanced. It's right, little, right. we do this here and this here. Kindergarten, you want less kids than you do in the right. fifth grade because it's different. And, you, and so you develop a system that allows for that to some degree to play out. And that's what they need to do to sell the negotiation. That's all they need to do. Well, look, they do that to sell the negotiations. Right. It's not about money. Right. It's about that right. particular right. thing. But, but, but having said that, again, it's about the kids, and you're right. You were there for the, for the last four years, but you were there before then, but you were a teacher. How many teachers were there with you on that board? How many people on the board? Well, it depends on uh, Drake Belisle taught one year. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Pamela Knowles taught one year. One year. Yeah, I mean, and before, teacher. so they had, were teachers kind of, you know, Pamela Knowles quit teaching and was a substitute teacher and became a, a lawyer. Uh, Bilal taught one year in music, How I believe. How many years were you there? Well, I taught about 40. But 40 years. It was more than 40, no, if you count the substitute teacher plus. part. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but it, they didn't have, they didn't have a, you, you don't go in and do something one time for one year and then have a sense of how it all works. Well, I, I understand you know, that, but my point, the, the point I'm making is, Steve, is that that's why you have such a respect with the teachers' union. The, the, my, you understand what I'm saying? You have well, a direct line, so my point is that the issue that you're talking about and stressing it was about the kids, they had, they had that on the board. Yeah, and the teachers have it. The teachers, the teachers understand the it. The teachers understand it. They understand it. And they know you understand it. So then, why is it that that there's this, this political stuff that comes to the table as opposed to spending a little bit more time trying to understand what you were saying. Well, I could, to... I could never get four votes on the board. Wow. And the reason I could never How get four that? votes was fairly, there were, was in my opinion now. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, the chairperson who I really liked, very good friends with, he wanted to get six votes in order to get four. You had to have the two people who consistently voted against things for children in the in the four votes or the six votes. It, it was you know, and they're both still on the board, Amy Constan and Julius Parsa Brown. But you couldn't you couldn't get four votes without. Now that's what's changed on the board now. Hmm. You can get four votes without theirs. Julia Brim Edwards, who's the new chairperson, she wants to get six votes or seven. You can never get seven because you had to get him when I was there because you had to get Pamela Knowles. And she was never going to go on mm -hmm. none stuff for kids particularly, in mm -hmm. my opinion. I mm -hmm. couldn't get her to go for any of that. She just voted against it for the, for I don't know why, some reason she had. But now you've got five other people you don't have that other block person who's influencing them, but she believes you can get seven, but she'll go with four or five. Well, if I'd have had four, crime any sakes, this district would be totally different. So they got four. They got four now. So the question is, will they will they, will they be able to do the yeah, actual yeah. stuff that ends up for the children? Yeah, right. And those are some of the things that we're talking about here. One, can you get the negotiations done? Okay, then, then the next thing, the, the next issue really is that they've got two middle schools coming online, Tubman and uh, Rose City Park, middle schools. Well, middle schools are really hard to make work well. They're really difficult. And now what the problem is, when we had Hurricane Vicky the, as the superintendent yeah, prior yeah, to, yeah. yes, and, and she had gone to K-8s. Well, the problem with K-8s, if you don't have enough kids in the cage, you can't give them things that hold their interest and engage them. So you have to do that in middle school. But they, the school district still hasn't figured out a couple things. One, that you really need to engage children at that age in the school system. 
You can't just go through and make sure we have all these other things in place, the discipline in place and this in place, and this, but not have engaging activities for kids that year, that age because they won't, they didn't, because they, you can do all this other stuff, but you're, you're always behind. You don't, the, like for instance, if you have athletics, you that athletics won't do the whole school, mm -hmm. but it'll take a lot of kids that you now don't have in your your systems for uh, uh, rerouting how they deal with education, because you got the kids playing basketball and that kid's gonna be gonna hang in there and be pretty good. A lot of them, not every kid, right, but right, but right. but. And if you have enough stuff, the band. If you have a marching band, say, then the band it takes a few more kids, and pretty soon what you have this whole say table full of children, and some of them are this, and some of them are engaged here, some of them like art, you engage them here, and then you have a smaller number left, and that smaller number is gets smaller enough so you have a better chance to work with it. If you don't have those other sports and music and art and other things, computer club or whatever, then, then those kids, they are also a part of that group that you need to now work with. Now you're overloaded with, you know, a couple, three, four hundred kids who are really difficult to work to with. And the teacher, let alone the counselors you yes. don't have, you got one or two counselors and you got 400 kids and you got, and so what you have to do is you have to engage enough of the children so that it allows you to work with the others. And there's a perfect model of that out here at Alice Ott Middle School in, in, it's one of the best middle schools in the country and it's in a very poor area, but we won't go look at it. Where is this? Oh, David Douglas has a middle school that's terrific. And that's, because he did that, and they, they don't have enough uh, engaging activities, but what he mm -hmm. did was, what the principal did was, the principal refused to hire any teacher who wasn't a superstar. He wouldn't just, okay, there's five people, I'll pick yeah, the best one. Yeah, he never did yeah, that. Yeah. What he did, he went and he, he kept going and going and going until he got somebody who, who was really, would, con would could connect with children that yes. age. Well, if you can connect in social studies with children that age, to a certain degree, it's similar to playing sports. Right, yes, right, right. Because some kids like social studies. Yes. I have a brother-in-law who became an archivist, historian, because of a little project he did when he was actually in the third or fourth grade, I believe, maybe fifth, and his little project, and he got fascinated in it. Well, if you have these outstanding teachers that can draw the children in, yes, yes. some of them will pick up and become writers. I have a, mm -hmm. a great niece who's a terrific little writer. She's big time. I mean, she's excellent, and she loves to write. And she's now in high school, but she started when she was a little kid, and she loved to write. Well, you get a few kids who love to write. Well, then you can work with them. You don't have them all out here in this, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. social system where you feel like you have to go into their homes and well, all, all this respect, other stuff. That's why I, I, I was really pushing the folk ed piece. Yeah, no, it's the same book. You need, and same that's concept. the engaging things. Yeah. You know, they have, uh, they have, if you go out to, uh, 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 Lost in Middle School, right, and uh, Jackson Middle School, they've got a shop. It's a nice one. Jackson Middle School has a shop, and I'll bet you a lot of those kids or into that and shop yes. and like it. And they have something every day to look forward yes. to. Yes. And they also have a terrific uh, art program out there. Mm -hmm. Fabulous art program. Really, really, really good. And kids will come to school every day looking forward to that. You give a child something yes, every exactly. day exactly. and that helps them get through. Exactly. Okay, that's, okay. so that's, okay. and, and that's mixed in with uh, those. So the question is, will we do that with those middle schools? And my answer is no. We're gonna do have all these children and then we're going to have to work with them all and with the social services and so forth because we're not going to engage them enough mm -hmm. because we haven't done that in any place. It, we have a couple of middle schools that work pretty good, Jackson, uh, Selwood works pretty good, uh, uh, West Sylvan, but they work pretty good because they don't have that whole group of kids, that whole group of social that needs social services. Yes. That's why. So it will, it can work because you don't have all that, that the children who need all the social services that that stress your school. You go into a classroom and you got eight or ten kids who are misbehaving. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You don't get that at Jackson. Well, because they're engaged. Well, and because they're well. and because of their background, yes. to a certain degree, they're not as liable to misbehave. Mm -hmm. And so we have a tendency to look at that instead of saying, okay, let's listen that down. So, mm -hmm. so that's a problem. Then we have the DBRAC, which is the the uh, doing the boundaries. That has to be done, and it's just a matter of getting the boundaries together. But it, it has to be that. Uh, the major thing left to do, really, in my opinion, is all these kids who can't read. I don't think there's any can't excuse. There's two, there is an excuse for kids who can't read. And now I'm talking about can't read decently well. Yeah. Little kids. Okay, little right. kids. We're talking little kids. And then it becomes, well, read, read the words. Yeah. Uh, you've got, as long as a kid speaks English, okay. of which most of our kids do, not all, of course, we have 102 languages. So, but as long as a kid speaks English, you should be able to teach that kid to read. There are exceptions and occasional exceptions. You know, for one thing, you have special ed exceptions to some degree, which is much more difficult. Or you have children who are very dyslexic, which makes it harder. But you still should be able to teach those children to read. All the children who speak English to begin with, we should be able to teach to read. Right. End of story. Occasionally, you have exceptions. You know, like the one guy I told you, uh, 12 years worth of everybody, he had one kid he never really could get to read very well. well. But... Uh, uh, that need we're not really addressing that well. You got 103 languages. How can 104, you put all, 104, 104, I guess. How can you put all of those kids together after, let's say, what, after well, you, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade? Well, they're you, all together? The, the, what, what I'm saying is that Jeez. if a kid comes in and he only speaks Farsi, right. okay. good luck teaching him to read English in the fourth grade, we'll say. It, there's a reason that kid isn't able to read English. Do they still allow that kid to get into the system to go up the system? Well, what, the, what, they do, what we do in Portland is the, the K-5 works pretty good for kids who come in who have, which is, this is one of the things that we need to be done. This is one of the things that Julius Barsh Brown voted against. Uh, we need to teach children who come into America mm -hmm. with a background and can't speak English we need to teach them to speak English. That's almost the first thing we need to teach them. Because if you can't speak English, <laughs> it's fine when you're young, mm -hmm. if you're kindergarten through fifth grade, because you have the teacher all day. And so the, she maybe has, or he maybe has one or two kids, and they can work with them and they can get them. The, the, best, the best student I ever had was a little girl who was Ukrainian background, and she was the best English student I ever had. But she... What we do, so in the younger grades, it's fine. But once they get to like the seventh grade, we just toss them into a classroom wow. and expect them to be, well, there's no way. We don't have a system where we're set up to teach them English, which is what I've tried to get them to do. I finally am getting to a I finally got them when I was in the hospital here at the very end of my term to, to vote, to do a study, to try to see where we could do that. But it, so those kids are... Outside of everybody should and be able to read. Were the teachers read. sharing that also too? Were the teachers sharing that issue with them? With yeah, guys? except yeah, except the teachers have a lot of issues. But that, but and that, that's, that's one that's, that's one of them. Yeah, yeah. Issue. I talked. Yeah, it's this, it's this it's, it's major, huge. Major, major, it's major, major, it's huge because we talk about how wonderful the immigrants are, and we want immigrants in this country. Right, right. And then they come in and they can, and we toss them into a classroom to learn. Uh, uh, let's say you learn biology, but you can't speak any English. Well, good luck. Good luck. And we used to do some work with them in the classroom that we don't do anymore. And we give them 20, about a half an hour a day to work on ESL stuff. It's not always language oriented, but it's not anywhere near enough. It's not anywhere near wow. enough. So there's, well, there's to that, that point. Let's hold that point that you got right Okay. There. And we'll take a little short break. Okay. And then we're going to come right back. And, and we'll I'll do some more. That's it. Okay. We'll take a short break, folks. We'll be right back with Steve Buell.
The other guys are pretty good, though. Huh? The other guys are pretty good. Yeah, yeah they're slow. They're not creative enough, you know what I mean? They're just not up to up to. Checking. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing, testing. Okay. Testing four, four, five, three, eight. Okay. All right. You got it. Welcome again to again to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard. We just took a short break here and, and gave uh, Mr. Buell a, an opportunity to relax for a moment and so we can get right back into uh, the discussion we're having. Again, we're talking about uh, and in, Mr. Buell here. Just basically, he's not on the board at this point in time. And all due respect, and I want you to understand it, and even to the new board members, this is an opportunity for you to get an understanding of what a, a, a school board member who's been on for the years and also a teacher what were some of the issues that he was faced with and where, where are we are today? And hopefully you'll take it that way, not take it from a political standpoint, because in all due respect, that's basically, as far as from my standpoint, and how they respond to it. Because in all due respect, in the past, he was the only guy that came to the, came to the table here. I guess maybe because they, because they knew I was going to ask teachers questions. No, I don't know. <laughs> I put it there. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah. anyway, but stick with us, okay? Steve, let's get right back Okay, now another, we're doing major issues, and we did major negotiations, issues. superintendent okay, search, right. the, the new middle schools, and uh, kids who can't read. Okay, one of the can't reading piece. things, is one of the, we're, we're doing a new reading program, mm. which is our strategy for the kids who can't read. Well, that's our strategy. And, in fact, I asked that specific question. Is this our strategy? And yes. But we did it for 10 schools. Now we're doing it this, this coming year for 10 more. Well, we got 60-some schools. Wow. So we're going to wait six years before we teach children. How to read. We get a program where it catches Is all the kids. Is comprehension a part of that piece? Sure. Yeah, they, that's part of the, yeah, the program. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's very important. Well, the program I think that they put together is pretty good. So six years from now, when your kid goes in the first grade, right. they probably have a pretty decent reading oh, program. For them. Yeah. Well, they've had them in the past. Part. Well, I tell you. I, a lot of it is just motivation. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to decide they're all going to read? And that's one of the problems that the testing brings in. Right. Because if our objective is to have the Let's say they used to have what they call benchmark. Right. This is where we want every kid at least mm -hmm. here. That's mm -hmm. average, basically. So we want to know how many kids we have a benchmark. Well, no. What we really want to know is do we have any kids who can't read? And if they can't mm -hmm. read well, then we need to teach them to read. Right. That's what we need right. to know. Yes, but yes. that's not where it's it works. Simple. That's not how it works. It doesn't work like that. That's the, that's the old-style teacher who wanted to make sure every kid could read in their classroom. That's what we need to go back to. Can every kid read? No, they can't. And what are we going to do to make sure that kid yes. can read? Wow. And we just can't have all these children going out into society who can't wow. read decently that's right. well. And that's a problem, it, by it, the way. It's a big problem. problem. It's called gang problem. All, it's, all, those, it's all, all, all sort of drop out of school problem. It's huge. Right. It's huge. Social and services. So oh and the, the other, one of the other major problems that they still have is the disparities in programs. In other words, if I'm up in the West Hills, and if I'm going to have better programs, That's more programs, plan, okay. more programs, and to a certain degree better, which I'll explain in a minute often, but more programs than kids in poorer neighborhoods. Wow. And really, the kids in more neighborhoods probably need more stuff. Mm -hmm. But... That's how it's worked for a long time. That's what the Paul Anthony thing, where he sued, that's what it was about. Paul Anthony's on the school board. Let me know real quick. Like, yeah. Paul's on the school board. He still on, on the school he's, board. he's on the school board, and he had sued the school. He, he had sued the school district and mm -hmm. said, "You're not taking. You're not making equal opportunities for, for children, and particularly in programs right. across the board." And what he did, he put together and he got all the programs. First one that ever did it. Heck of an achievement in a way, because they didn't. I don't know if they didn't want it out or what. But the okay, here's this school, here's the programs. Here's this school, here's the programs. Here's this well-to-do school, here's the programs. Hey, look pretty good. Here's this school that's kind of poor. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what. And so he maintains, and then he withdrew. They were pretty mad at him, and he withdrew his suit because he says they're now moving forward to take care you of that. You got to be kidding. Well, 
I think they if they'll do the stuff that I set up. Yeah, but <laughs> the the committee that I got them to set up, right. then they are moving forward. So the question is, will they continue to do that and actually do it? Mm, but, the way, but the way the article... Depends. They say they Steve, will. Steve, in all, in all due respect, the way the article was written and what I read, that they didn't have, they didn't talk to the solution in terms of what you just said. What are the, what what no, I no, point, what it, I got them? Yes, no, you're correct. It, it, and, it, and so the, they said they're going to do it, and they, they're they're okay. We're going to do this. That's what got Paul to withdraw, according to Paul. And that's I not the him. article. Though. I'm just saying. I'm, no, I'm talking about the universal piece. The article. Yeah, well, the, the article. News. Right. Yeah. They don't even. Uh, right now. And the parents right are out there now, if I that. asked, if I asked one of those new members on the school board, what are you doing on to do the disparities? Right. They, they wouldn't would know. know. They wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. I would, would know. think. I would, think. I would guess they wouldn't. They might have, because I explained it to Julia Brim Edwards. Kind of, I said, put me back on this committee because what this one committee is was a budget committee basically, but it was trying to make sure that we could lay a foundation for every child having equal programs as the foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first came on, I was going to give you an example. This sounds kind of screwy in a way because really you want equity, not right. equality. Right. But you can't really, without the equality, you can't really move to yeah, the equity because that. the equity isn't in the programs. The equity is in the special programs. When I first came on the school board, I got them to cut the grass. So if you went to Jackson Middle School, they'd cut the grass. It was beautiful. You went over to North Portland School, Vernon. They weren't even cutting the grass. I mean, literally the whole year. Cut, wouldn't even cut the grass. Didn't cut the grass in, in the front lawn. And because it was going to cost them a little bit of money. Right. But, and it was going to take two people to do it. Well, I believe that that's a foundational aspect right. of your school. Every right. kid comes to school, you should have your grass cut. Right. Right. It should look decent. Sure. There should be sure. a little pride in sure. your school. Sure. Well, this, it's the same thing for your basic foundation. Mm -hmm. Every kid should have access to, uh, well, let's put it in a different way. If I have access to music with my kid in the fifth grade up in this school, why wouldn't I get access to music for this kid in the fifth grade in this right, school? Exactly. It should be, that access should be there for everybody. So if I'm going to get a choice of 12 different electives in this school, well, I should get a choice of a whole bunch of electives in this school too. Mm -hmm. if I'm, I mean, it should be, if I have languages being taught in this school as part of the, the basic same. thing, then it should be the What about just that's all, right. and the so same that's the foundation. What about the same electives for all schools? Well, it, it, as long as you, the electives might be different. Sometimes they depend on who the teachers are. Yeah, but I'm still saying. <laughs> right, but basically you should have this wide choice at all schools, yeah. say. So, so it should be equal that way. Yeah. I'm not sure it should be the exact same one, but it should be equal that way. But then what you do is the equity piece is in the special programs. Mm -hmm. So on top of that foundation, you put the special programs. But right now, a lot of our special programs were... Catch and catch can. So you got, okay, the reason you got a special program here is because we had this teacher who thought it was a good idea and blah, 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 blah. And, and, or everybody gets one. Well, if I got 58 kids that need it and this guy, this school has 12, everybody gets one, doesn't work. I should get, if I got 58 kids and they got 12, I should get six. Mm -hmm. I should get five and they should get one. Mm -hmm. And so you, how do we make those decisions for special programs like special reading, TAG, ESL, uh, language for kid, you know, second language, second language, which is a little different than ESL to some degree. How, how do we make those decisions? That should be clear to everybody, so then it's equitable. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but then, as a very smart man I talked to two days ago on this exact same topic said, yeah, but what about the community aspect and what about this mm -hmm. and this? Yeah, that's right. But until you do the foundation, you really can't build the house. Mm -hmm. And you can do the special programs becomes part of that foundation. Once you get that all done, then you can look and say, you know, they're raising $300,000 for four teachers up here at this school and they're getting all this extra stuff then we could talk about it. Mm -hmm. Now you can't even talk about it because it all mingles together. Yes. See? So setting up that foundation is a really important thing in order to allow you to deal with it. Another thing, uh, uh, another real problem that, and that came out in the Paul Anthony thing too, where, the, where the PAPSA, the 
the Portland Association of Principals. Okay, they yes. were real critical of him, and because he would he would kind of, and I was the guy. They're critical of me too because we would go kind of stick our finger in yeah, yeah, actual yeah, problems. Yeah. What well, a reason that we were, of course, is because they weren't being taken care of. Mm -hmm. If they'd have been taken care of, why, why do you want to make more work yes, for yourself? Exactly. I didn't have to make any more right. work for myself, mm -hmm. but I wanted the problems taken care of, and they weren't kids. being addressed. The kids? They were not being addressed, and they really weren't being addressed, mm -hmm. huge numbers of them. And so one of the, pro one of the things was that our hiring of principals was really faulty how we were doing it. So you're my principal, I'm your assistant principal. I'm going to suck up to you all over the place, right. and you're, I'm your protege. Right, right, and right. You're going right, to right. support me. Right, exactly. And I'm going to do what you want. Yes. And I might then go over and just be nasty as heck to these teachers over mm -hmm. here, but I'm going to be great with you. Yeah. We're buddies, man. Yes, yes. And so what we were doing was hiring the new principals from our assistant principals or our vice principals. We were hiring them as the new principal on the say-so of the principal. Oh, wow. And so we were ending up with some principles that were not very good. I'm sorry, it's the only way to say it. I'm not going to yeah, name no, names here, but I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah, you can yeah. see letters. Like, can it's see unbelievable, it's unbelievable how bad it was. Why. And uh, so I got them to change that. In the background, I kind of influenced them to do it. You could never get that kind of stuff through the school board, but I could go talk to the HR director and say, hey, why don't you do this? And then HR director, he did that. He started to do that. So now we're not doing that, but we're also, so what is the how do we deal with the principals and what do we ask them to do and how do we make sure that they're doing a good job? That's really got a lot of work yet to do. Mm. That's the accountability of the principals. The principals are key. They're the key people in the school district, really. I mean, oh, the yeah, teachers oh, yeah, are, but oh, I mean, yeah. the principal runs the yeah, school, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a nasty principal oh. or you got a good principal. The good principal maybe is going to really motivate those teachers and make sure the kids are learning. Mm -hmm. A nasty principal is going to turn everybody off and they're going to mm -hmm. flee. And so you got new teachers coming mm -hmm. in. And I mean, we've had a lot of problems like that. Wow. And so we haven't really we haven't really dealt with them. Uh, another uh, another problem, though, and this is a harder one to understand that we haven't looked looked at well just the general education that we are doing in the school system in other words are we teaching kids uh, social studies when we teach social studies are we including a lot of multicultural social studies in there mm -hmm. you know and one is obviously mm -hmm. better than the other mm -hmm. are we are how how strong is our math math teaching? How good? How are we teaching kids about uh, civics? Do we? I mean, just the general teaching part. Are we teaching kids about coding? Are we teaching them about computers and how to deal with it? Uh, just that whole idea of what we're actually teaching. We got so caught up in uh, testing the Common Core, which is good in some areas, not so good in others. And this idea of a social justice, which is a very good thing to teach in the schools, mm -hmm. but we've it became it, those things have become super important. Where I'm not sure we're teaching science like we should hmm. to little kids, or health, or mm -hmm. some of the major things. So are we or not? Hmm. Are we at every school? Do we have health at every school? Do we have, is the social studies good? That whole idea, just how good the general education is. Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of look at that almost classroom by classroom. But we don't have any system set up. Wow. We're depending on the principal to do that, but we're asking the principals to do all these other things. Do you have your data stuff? Yeah. Do you have your your uh, yeah. your little committees? We have about ten committees in each school or so. You know, do we? And we're asking them all those things, but we're not asking them, okay, how's the social studies? Are, can all your children write well? Are mm -hmm. we really? Mm -hmm. Are you making sure they all can write well? How how solid yep. is your math program? Do you have th that whole? That's mm -hmm. real ed basics. Ed basics, and we're not. We haven't really set. We're not set up to deal with that, which is too bad. Uh, and it's some. That's where you go off to a. <laughs> you go off to a smaller school district. You go off to Gaston. Say, they got. Maybe they have. I don't know. Maybe they have two elementary schools. You know all the teachers. Superintendent knows all the teachers, how they're doing. Everybody can know. You can get pretty good education because you say, well, this one ain't doing so good. We're going to 
-hmm. In Portland, it's just it's way harder to follow. So you have to have this. You have to have the principles on top of that. And our principals, we're asking them to do all this other yeah. junk just, that it's hard for them to be on top right, of that. Right, to right. sit down and say, if you're my teacher, I should be able to sit down and say, tell me what you're doing in social studies. And yeah, we'd talk yeah, about it and say, well, yeah. what about this? And you, know, you have suggestions and tell me how your math, where your da da da. Now we say, well, tell, show me your data on the such and such and show me your, uh, you know, how are you doing on your testing? And, uh, and it's not, it doesn't work very well. It doesn't work mm. very well. Uh, the another thing that we're not I think the one of the last major issues is the public image public image the public image of the school district is not very good haven't been very good for a long time haven't been very good since the since the eighties really uh where it was pretty darn good in the eighties I mean we were considered as good a school district practically as it was in the country in a big city but now it's not very good, and it's not it's not going to be solved by everybody getting along. It's going to be solved, in my opinion, by responding to the issues in an intelligent way that makes some sense and really brings children forward. By my kids in this, you know, it, it, it's like. There's a national, when you do national studies and surveys and stuff, the idea of parents about the, how good the system, the school system in the United States is, how good is it? Mm -hmm. It's not very good. Mm -hmm. But when they ask them about their own classroom, I mean their own kid's classroom, they almost, they're way better. Yeah. Way better. Their own kid's classroom's great, but the whole system stinks. Well, you can't, that doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do, the, I think the school board's making some good decisions to start with, but if they don't address the disparities, and they don't address these things, you'll never really get back to, to where they should be, in my opinion. It's, you have to address the problems mm -hmm. in order to actually have people say, this is a good school system, again. You got to address the problems because they're problems, mm -hmm. and the problems aren't the pro. We've had a tendency to address the adult problems, not the problems in the schools with the children. And for instance, if you look at the Courageous Conversations program, which has got a lot of great parts to it, it addresses how the adults think. It doesn't address how the adults teach children. Mm. Mm. There's a difference. Mm. And how the adults teach children, whether they're doing a good job of uh, working or uh, working through uh, things like, uh, you know, you have kids of color, how do you work with them? Mm -hmm. That's where the ball game is. Yeah. It's not whether, uh, you're not going to get all the racial prejudice out of every one of our teachers if you do courageous conversations every day for 24 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get them all yeah. out. Yeah. You can help it and you can yeah, do yeah. and yeah. it's fine. Right. The program's right. fine. Right. But what really you need to do is how are you doing in the classroom now? And of course, one will affect the other, but it's not direct enough. Mm -hmm. It needs to be, we need to actually have uh, teachers who understand, okay, here's some things that I can do better. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. different than saying, I'm a bad individual, yeah. or yeah. I'm a good individual, yeah. or I've got, yeah. I'm looking at my stuff. It's, and so for me, that always was a problem, but you can't, Really, you can't address that on the school board because mm -hmm. you're kind of, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't really, people wouldn't mm -hmm. really let me even talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what comes to mind? I'm going to throw this out to you because I, I want you to. Because I'm pretty close to yeah. down at the end of the but end, You got to get another one. No, 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 I'm pretty close yeah. to yeah. Because I remember when we went through this lead issue. We went through the mm -hmm. lead issue mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of it. And I, I went to a number of the meetings aspect of it, but I saw young families. I saw young families. That was the push. And my point is that, is is that a young families, right? They got their kids, if you will, and that's pretty. That's, that's a lot of pressure, if you will, being brought to the table. You know, in the past, that wasn't the case. No, it was the case with the lead. Was, no, no, but the, this yeah, guy. Yeah, that's lead, what I'm saying. It was, was but prior to that, yes, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. See, right. And, and so you look at that, and then you think about the planners in terms of, in all due respect, even like the mayor. When I, when I, even when I ran for office, I. And I went to this various session with the mayor and whatever. He's a young man. 
you know, he's a high tech mindset. It's not the old, it's not the old days. Mm -hmm. It's high tech. And then when you look at the planners, they're all young folks, high tech, development, bang. It's not about housing anymore. It's a, it's a whole new day. It's about, hey, all you need is a roof over your head and, and one room and, you know, that's it, you know, bang. And we're the kids, oh, we don't have those. I'm just throwing that out because, and then I, and I look at the school system and I'm saying, okay, fine, well, are they teaching the kids to meet that future? Or are they just teaching Depends the Depends on the school. That's what I'm saying. Depends on the teacher. That's what I'm saying. You know, but the plan is not necessarily, wow. we've never really sat down, in my opinion, and said, this is kind of what we want kids to know. Yeah, yeah. Versus here, we just kind of keep going along. Yes, that's the old way. We're going to take the, ten, well, the old way was. Was a little bit but, better. Well, the, the old way was that you did that in your classroom. Yes, right, right. right the right. teacher sat down and said, what do I want these kids to know? And then we went to this, what do they know, yeah. called the kids opera, call it the outputs. Mm. You know, we want, we want the output coming out what we want to come out. Right. So we're going to measure all the outputs. Right. But really, it doesn't, the outputs, measuring the outputs doesn't help decide where you got there. They never really could build back. And, and the fact that they started to measure all those outputs actually made the inputs worse. Mm -hmm. And it made it worse because the teacher used to say, hmm, okay, my kids need to know this. And then she would teach that or he would teach that. Where now they go, this is what the state says they need to know. They need to know this and this. But it's not necessarily, it's kind of, it's not necessarily what kids necessarily need to know. It's we're going to measure them. Mm -hmm. So we want you to be able to measure this. And from that, we figure out what they need to know. Instead, we should figure out what they need to know to get along in society and teach that. Yeah, exactly. And then measure that. Yeah, exactly. Because we only measure really reading and and math. We yeah, quit measuring. We're going to now measure science, but we quit measuring like writing because it's oh, hard yeah. to measure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we should, all these children should be writing all the time. But since we don't measure it as a state, nobody, not nobody, but a lot of teachers don't go, they go, oh, I'm going to need to do this, what they're going to be measured, because that's what everybody in the system thinks, where they really should be going, you know, it's pretty darn hard to get a decent job if you can't write decently exactly, well. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And you sure as heck can't do it, basically, if you can't read decently okay, well. Okay. So I need to have these kids learning to read and write decently well, regardless of what they're measuring. Right, 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 right. Same with people going out in, in, uh, uh, going out into society, and being able to deal with, for instance, let's say the fake news or how to deal. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. one of the things you should be able to look and yeah, say, yeah. hey, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, that's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. But it's nobody, not very many teachers yeah. take that and go, yeah. okay. And we don't let them hardly anymore. That's mm -hmm. the problem. And they don't have time because their workload's yeah, too yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, that's another reason why I, I brought that point up about the voc ed piece. Back when I went to school, Voc Ed was in, within the entire area where I went. It was the same Voc Ed. We competed with one another. Yeah. You got it. We competed. Uh, you comprehend and you read because you had to read the books to be able to do those things. Like uh, whether it be health ed, whether it be home ec, uh, whether it be uh, architectural. I mean, we had, we had these vocational blue collar type, blue collar types of a training aspect of it that was in the school system. And uh, we were busy, and we and you 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 forced yourself to read and to read and comprehend because otherwise you wouldn't be there, and that's why you were there because you couldn't get it at home because mom and dad hadn't gone through the system, so we had something that that actually transitioned into futures. That's what voc ed meant to me during that particular time. But when I see this here. There's nothing there. There's no blue collar training at all that I see in the poor schools. Don't get me wrong. They, they may have, like yeah. you said, they may have one here, this, that, the other. They but, have some, but, but, but my but point yeah. is that you, you Well, get, you want to get something where you transition in. That, that's, you can transition. That's right. But you can't transition in unless you can read. You can't transition to anything really right. now. I mean, the, right. the, 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 to a certain degree, everything's changed. I went out to dinner with some people last night, and their son was in. Um, 
was in some tech job and, yeah, and yeah, doing all the tech yeah, stuff, yeah. which he needed to learn someplace. Yeah. We should be teaching that. Yeah. And that, in a way, is voc ed, the tech yeah. job, the tech stuff. But little Johnny here, the, little Johnny's here, their parents, their parents are, as, are t uh, acute, if you will, to what's going on in the high tech piece. You got me? Right. But if the high tech was available and the competition was there, you get my point? Then guess what? Little Johnny would learn because mom and dad can't. They can't even. They can't even. They they can't even basically look at the the homework, if you will. But over here, if you had the piece and that competition, that's what that's what got that. That's how scholarships were given and whatever. People were excelling accordingly, and the people, the well to do, if you will, could recognize the results because, i.e., there was an economy there. People paid taxes. You know, what I mean, people were were, were doing things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But today, you know, they're not at the table. They need, that, that needs to be recognized also, too. They need to know that, hey, this has a major impact on the economy if these people don't succeed. That's what we are today. Yeah. And then we come up with acceptable new economic venues like gangs and this, that, and the other, and specialty items in that social end of it. We didn't have that doing when I was going to school. And one of the problems is that we don't work backwards. In other words, we're worrying about the number of kids who graduate. But so we go look at the high schools, which is fine. But yeah. we should be looking at yeah. the first grade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if you don't learn to learn, in the, if you don't read, learn to read in the first hey. grade or learn to write decently well, you have a tough time graduating. And if you go off to college, you can't do it. I have a friend who just retired, who was an ESL teacher, and she was suing, she went to the Office of Civil Rights <laughs> because her, the kids that she had in ESL, we didn't have a program that was set up to allow yeah, them, yeah. We, they can't even speak yeah, English yeah, decently yeah, well. Yeah. Well, good luck going to yeah, college. Yeah. Good luck going out and getting a job in almost any, any pretty good job if you can't speak English. You can do it if you speak Spanish and English. I can get work if I speak Spanish, mm -hmm. but if I speak Farsi, mm -hmm. I don't, good mm -hmm. luck mm -hmm. if that's all I speak. Mm -hmm. You know, one mm -hmm. of the neat stories in the school system is that the superintendent, the man is superintendent right now, right. who's done a wonderful job in both the financial stuff in the school system and the facilities. He's the guy that pushed and got the stuff going on the, uh, and the bond and the, and the safety and so forth and the lead. He taught himself, he came out, he's an immigrant. He came in when he was 23 and into the United States. He didn't speak any English when he was 23 years old. He taught himself English. But guess what? That existed when I was going to school. We only had one language, it was English. Right. But yeah. what I, my point was he taught himself English. Okay. okay. And okay. so by teaching you himself quit. English, he. what we need to do is teach children English well enough so they can do what he did. Exactly. Which, and now he's, exactly. he's running the school system I right mean, now wow. until we get a new superintendent. Well, Steve, this has been great. You know, you got to come back. You know, we, we've got a lot to talk well, about. And, you know, all due respect, they need A couple of years, help. I'll be back. Yeah, but probably. they need help. No, but they need help. I mean, the folks, in all due respect, they need help. I know how full, I know how purpose, I'm, I know how committed you are for kids. And so we've got to have you back. Okay? I like being on your show, Bruce. Thank you very much for the time, buddy. Yeah, thank you.